What needs and desires bind all of humanity? Happiness, health, peace, freedom from suffering. How can we most effectively find the happiness and peace we seek and minimize our unhappiness and discomfort? By creating and maintaining a healthy mind. In recent years, modern science has discovered secrets of the human brain. Over centuries, contemplative practices have unlocked the potential of the mind. Imagine the possibilities if the two were united to create a new field of science and to bring solutions to a suffering world. The major worlds that we're talking about are the world of science and the scientific ways of knowing the world, the inwardly or outwardly, and then the world of the contemplative practices that are different but equally valid ways of understanding inner and outer reality. One of them focuses on looking at outer development. You know, it, it, it comes from outside human beings and it measures things from the outside. The contemplative world comes from the inside. You know, it uses the human nervous system refined by meditation to answer the same questions. They're both very, very powerful, very, very robust, and they need to come together for maximum benefit. Following years of effort, Co-founders Adam Engel and Dr. Francisco J. Varela succeeded in bringing these two paradigms together. Beginning in 1987, some of the world's top scientists have been meeting with the Dalai Lama and other contemplatives. <laughs> Nearly 20 years later, the Mind and Life Dialogues continue to be a one-of-a-kind forum. I'm trying to seeking some kind of backing from the scientific sort of what's it, uh, finding uh, in order to have a healthy body, a happy mind. The distinguishing characteristic of our meetings is the fact that we really focus on the dialogue and we try and create an environment where um, a dialogue can happen. Our goals in neuroscience are, are of course basic research. We want to know who we are. What, what are we made of? How do we work? But in addition, we know that once we know how the normal brain works, we'll be in a very good position to fix it when something goes wrong. It's basic research, but we're very interested in how we can make a difference in the world. Those dialogues are changing the hearts and minds and views of virtually every person that walks into the room. They go back as somewhat different people, and I think it really helps um, uh, change their science in very significant ways. The Mind and Life Dialogues are accompanied by the publication of both scholarly and mainstream news reports, articles, and books. These worldwide publications bring the concepts of creating a healthy mind into scientific and public discourse. These are the first steps towards the creation of what is nothing less than a new field of science, one dedicated to the study of how to create and maintain a healthy mind. This is the way that new fields of science get created. Quantum mechanics, I'm told, started in, uh, with, with very, very small discussions among scientists at that time that, that had experimental results that wasn't fitting the previous scientific theories. Another step toward establishing this new field of scientific study is to bring together young researchers and contemplative practitioners to create new avenues for the development of crucial data. To accomplish this, the Mind and Life Summer Research Institute was formed in 2003. Currently, scientists are utilizing Mind and Life's funding and knowledge base to conduct other rigorous research projects at 16 top-level academic institutions including the University of Wisconsin, where Dr. Richard Davidson's findings were recently published in the prestigious Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. 
we have been mounting a program of research on the biological consequences of meditation. And uh, this has been done with the encouragement and uh, facilitation by the Mind and Life Institute. And we and others now have found that meditation is a, uh, a procedure that is extremely effective in changing the brain circuits that underlie emotion. And it can facilitate a more positive change uh, in the brain and in behavior. I think that it's only just now that we've got parts of the planet that are living with such abundance and they're still unhappy that people are starting to answer the question, well, maybe the outer stuff, maybe getting more of this stuff or better stuff isn't really going to solve this problem for me. You know, I've got pretty much all of the stuff that I need. Why am I not happy? Science combined with warm heartness, then things become positive, constructive. Science, technology goes with negative emotion, then destructive. More killing, more harm, eventually, the world itself may suffer. The source of the world's suffering is the suffering mind. Understanding this mind is a new frontier in medical science. The call is urgent, timely, and far-reaching. Everywhere I turn, I'm seeing positive response to the premise that it's time to really develop uh, a scientific understanding of how the mind works. In general, I think that many of the people who wind up being sponsors of Mind and Life wind up being sponsors because really they're driven by love of the possibilities that unfold around waking up to the full spectrum of the possible in our own lives. And when you find people in the world who are committed to that kind of thing, you want to be part of a group like that. It takes really visionary people who are philanthropists in their hearts that have the funding to basically uh, step up based on their conviction that uh, it will provide benefit and their vision that it will provide benefit. The Mind and Life Institute invites you to join this important work and help build a new field of scientific study, creating and maintaining a healthy mind.